What's up guys? We're back in the garage again today and today's project is going to be upgrading the coilovers on the S2000. And the coilovers that I have decided to go with are the Bilstein or Bilstein PSS B14s. These are an extremely popular option on the S2000 form. The PSS and the PSS9 are both extremely popular options. The only difference between the two, as far as I'm aware, is the PSS does not have adjustable dampers. But from, from everything I've seen, these things are so good out of the box that you don't really need adjustable dampers, especially for a street setup. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of show you a little bit how this is done because a lot of the threads on the S2000 form are kind of outdated and a lot of them don't even have pictures anymore. And honestly, a video is easier to follow. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I've got them all unboxed here, and uh, this, is, this is everything that comes in the box with the kit. It comes with obviously the four coilovers, a couple spanners, and some instructions that has very little English, if any English at all in there. So the two fronts do appear to be side specific. This is the front right, that's the front left. The rears don't appear to be, they don't specify left or right. So with these coilovers, you will need to transfer over your top hats from your stock suspension, so we have the coilovers out of their packaging here. I'm just gonna show you briefly everything that's included and what's not included. Obviously it has like the main coilover components. It comes with a nut, it comes with the top washer for the shock mount. And that's like that for all of them. Um, the reason you're gonna need to know that is because if you're like me and you only, and you only have two of your stock shocks, um, you're gonna have to buy some additional shock mounts. These are aftermarket. I got them from like 1A Auto or something. It was like 50 bucks for two of them. Um, so this should have everything I need. Let's go ahead and get into it. So we got the top hats transferred over. The two new ones are on the rear and the front ones I transferred over from the front shocks. As far as the aftermarket ones compared to the OEM ones, I think the shock mount itself is pretty similar. The bushings were a little bit different design, but not a big deal at all. Everything seemed to fit together. So I'm gonna start with the front passenger side coilover here. First thing I'm gonna have to do is remove the existing coilover. This is gonna be the same regardless if you have coilovers or the stock suspension. So I'm gonna remove this nut or this screw here, this screw here, and the bolt that connects the bottom to the lower control arm. I'm also going to remove this 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter bolt here for the brake line. And in order to get these new coilovers on, I'm going to remove this bolt here for the bracket running to the ABS line. And I'm also gonna have to remove the sway bar end link right here. In order to get enough room to slide the coilover in and have it go through the top up there, I'm gonna, you have to push down on this bottom control arm. To get you more room, you need to remove that that lower sway bar bolt right there. So let's get to it. Here's just a quick comparison between the Bilsteins and the Yonakas. As you can see, the Bilstein is quite a bit taller, and I think that's because, well partially it's because right now my screw is only like a couple threads on at the top, so that's a little bit of the difference. Um, and the other reason I believe is because it has this little helper spring on here, and that will kind of shrink up once it's on the car, because if you look at pictures online, these are fully compressed when they're on the car. So yeah, that difference in length is the reason that you need to take the sway bar end link off so that you can get more travel on your lower control arm. Okay, so on the passenger side, I actually did not have to take the sway bar end link off. 
uh, and I was able to slide the coil over on over top of the lower control arm. So on the driver's side, it had a lot of travel that I had to move it down and I just wasn't able to do it without taking off that sway bar end link. But I didn't have to on the passenger side, so that's one less step. Okay, so we got everything buttoned up. Just need to go through and torque everything to spec. So one thing to remember, obviously on coilovers, when you go to torque anything with the bushings, you need to jack up this hub and get it at where it would be at ride height. And then you can go ahead and torque the bushings to spec. Don't do it in this state right here because they could tear your bushings. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to the rears. Moving on to the rear coilovers here. I'm gonna show you the driver's side since uh, this one is a little bit more involved. Basically, as far as the Bilstein coilover goes, I still have this top nut just barely, just a couple threads on there so that I can still index everything as I need to. I'll tighten that up after I get it inside the car. So to do the rear coilovers, it kind of depends a little bit. Some people say that you only have to disconnect this end link here, but on the driver's side or on the passenger side, I couldn't get it down far enough to get the coilover in and out. So I loosened up the top control arm bolts on the rear as well as just like I did on the front. Uh, made it a little bit more involved, but with it only being one person, that's what I had to do. If you had two people, you might be able to have your second person stand on top of this and then kind of finagle it in there. But with it just being one person, uh, that's what I had to do. Then you're gonna have to remove these three bolts around your filler neck here. And then you will have to remove this one bolt here that kind of secures the filler neck. You'll be able to kind of rotate this entire uh, fuel neck out of the way. And then you'll be able to gain access to the top of your uh, dampers back here. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. So with a little bit of uh, muscle here, you can pull back the fuel neck. I went ahead and put the cap back on the fuel neck so I don't get fuel fumes all in my garage. So now you have access to the top of the driver's side coilover. So now we can move on to the actual suspension. Okay, so as you can see, this is what I'm looking at right now before I take the end link off back there. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to compress the shock and get it on top of the lower control arm, so I'm gonna have to take the end link out. I'm guessing I'm gonna have to take the upper control arm off on this one as well. I wanna go ahead and get to it. So I got the end link taken off and there was a 0% chance I was gonna be able to move this whole assembly down far enough to uh, get the coil over over top of this control arm down here. So I'm gonna remove the control arm bolts and the ABS wire bracket back here. I'll remove all of those, just like I did on the fronts. That way I'll have enough slack to be able to push the suspension down far enough to get the coilover mounted. So I got the coilover over top of the control arm and it's up in the mounting area in the chassis. So one thing that I learned from last time or from the other side is before I go and bolt the bottom side of this down, but after it's already placed around the control arm, slide, this, slide that back out so that I can put this bolt back in there. Because if you bolt that down, then you have no access to that bolt up there. I found that out the hard way on the other side, so it'll save me some time on this side. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a little bit easier said than done with just one person. I ended up taking a pretty long pry bar here and I kind of wedged it right in between the coilover and the, and the lower control arm. And then I got it kind of close and stuck a screwdriver in there to kind of line everything up. And as soon as I got it, I was able to slide the screw in like that. Everything's basically together now. Now it's just a matter of tightening all the bolts. Uh, same thing as the front, go through and tighten the upper control arm bolts and the lower shock bolt to go ahead and torque all those down to spec. And then you can move inside and torque the top two nuts to spec. And then you can tighten the, the center nut. Pretty much the only thing I have left to do is snug down those two nuts on the studs for the uh, mounting top hat. And then I still have to torque down this top nut on the center up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all this down now and then we'll be pretty much good to go. All right, so the coilovers are all installed. I drove the car around the block. Kind of just lets it settle a little bit from being on jack stands for the past couple days. This is the ride height like straight out of the box. No adjustments whatsoever. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to adjust these. I'm just gonna show you on one because it's gonna be the same process for all of them. So let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, so once you get the car jacked up, get the wheel off, now you're looking at the coil over here. So to lift it up, which is what I want to lift it. So I'm gonna break loose this bottom collar here. I'm gonna unlock the two uh, collars on here with my spanner wrenches. I just wanna break it just enough to get the bottom collar loose. That's the locking collar. So then from here, since I'm raising it, I just wanna turn this upper collar to the right. I guess it would be clockwise, depending on how you look at it. And obviously, if I was uh, lowering it, I would turn it the other way, and I would have to lower this lower one even further down. Uh, the main thing is here, you, since I'm going up and I want a point of reference, I just want to loosen this just enough to unlock it, and I'm going to use this as kind of a measurement so that I do the exact same thing on the other one. So now that we've got we've lifted up this upper collar here, I'm gonna go ahead and measure the distance between the upper and the lower collar here. So I raised it by about a quarter of an inch and then just do the same thing to the other side. So once you've done that, just spin the bottom collar all the way up and then lock the bottom collar to the top collar. Same, just reverse as how you loosened it. Just get your bottom spanner wrench on here and your upper spanner wrench and just twist them together and you've just adjusted your coil over. So now you need to go through and repeat this for all four corners. Lower the car down, drive it around a little bit and then you'll probably need to do this at least one more time to get everything perfect. All right guys, well that about does it for the Bill Stein PSS coilover install. Um, as far as my thoughts on them, I've had a chance to drive the car around a bit on them. I do really like them. They're a little bit more firm than the Yonaka coilovers that I had, but that's not a bad thing. That's kind of what I wanted because those Yonakas were really soft, even on the firmest setting. They, they go plenty low enough. I'm probably somewhere around like the middle setting right here. I could go higher or I could go lower. Right now I'm, I'm about to change my tire setup. So I've got quite a bit of wheel gap up front. So I uh, don't mind that. But uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I'd say I'm pretty pleased with them. So uh, if you're considering these coilovers, um, so far I would recommend them. But that's all I have for today. So uh, thanks for watching.